Hey everyone, I'm Kendall Wyatt, the content director here at Vicmonic. Today we're going to do a high-level brief synopsis of acid-base imbalances. I know, everyone's favorite subject. Mine too, of course. Now, we're going to go through the lab values and then we're quickly going to go over how you can briefly guesstimate an acid-base problem. Now, when you feel like you're solid on the content, head over to our Mastery Challenge where you can really see if you remember all of the facts for long-term retention. And of course, it's free. If you don't feel solid on the content yet, you can always visit one of our webinars where we go into much more detail explaining more crazy things about all the nitty gritty details. After that, be sure to download our absolutely free outline and study guide covering acid base imbalances. Now let's get to those details. Now the lab values we're going to talk about are pH, CO2, and bicarb or HCO3. The normal pH of blood is 7.35 to 7.45. That's the normal range. Now, of course, below that is acid and above that is alkaline. And you look at pH and you have to assess whether it's up or whether it's down. Well, if it's up, then that's alkalosis or the alk loser inside of pygmonic. If pH is down or less than 7.35, you know that's acidosis or our acidic lemon inside of pygmonic. CO2, what is a normal CO2? Well, pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Okay, I got that. I memorized one. Oh, I gotta memorize all these others. Well, you can easily remember acid base because pH is 7.35 to 7.45. So CO2 is 35 to 45. Those are pretty much the same numbers. Remembering 35 to 45, that's what you need to remember. CO2 is an acid. Now, how do we remove and regulate CO2 in our body? Well, we blow it off. <sighs> that's blowing off some acid. So 22 to 26 is bicarb. Now, bicarb, remember bicarb is regulated by the kidneys and it's slow to react. So remember, you get angry and you huff and you puff and you blow? Well, you could do that really fast but it takes a long time, sometimes 24 hours, for your kidneys to be able to begin compensating for all your angry and huffy puffiness. Now, let's talk about an actual acid-base problem. I want you to look at that pH and I want you to say, is it within 7.35 to 7.45? If the lab value is below 7.35, well, that's an acid. If the number is above 7.45, that's basic or alkaline. So I want you to look at a problem and assess the pH. If it's below 7.35 and trending downward, you need to put acidosis. If it's above 7.45, write down alkalosis. And put that down in your problem right away, so you already got 50% of the problem. You've got half the answer right there. Step number two is to look at the CO2. The CO2 level. Now, remember what regulates the CO2? Hmm. <sighs> oh, breathing, right? Remember, if you get mad and you get upset, you're going to blow off a lot of CO2. Remember that. So we look at the CO2. I want you to look at it and say, hmm, is it between that normal range of 35 to 45? And if you say no, well, it's abnormal, right? And look at pH. Assess the two. If CO2 is going the opposite direction of pH, one up and one down, or one down and one up, they're going in opposite directions. Why is this important? Well, this makes it super easy. If it is, that's a respiratory problem. Well, if we already have acidosis or alkalosis written down, then you already have your answer. It's a respiratory alkalosis or a respiratory acidosis. You have one of the two answers right there, and for the most part, with all the basics, you're done. Now, what if they're both going in the same direction? Hmm, then we need to look at bicarb, HCO3, and only do we look at it then. Because you can remember that metabolic problems, metabolic acidosis and metabolic alkalosis are all down, 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 or up, up, up. It's really kind of that simple. Now, it does get more detailed when we talk about compensation. But right there is going to be able to get you 80% of the problems right every single time. Now, for compensation and all the other details, you can add those on later. And once you understand this concept, you can actually add them on pretty easy. For all the other details and everything you need to know, even a wonderful pygmonic with all kinds of graphical details, you can play it over and over. You can even go and have as a bedtime story if you like. And those are all the details and the fine little things that you can put together in our study guide with our pygmonics or by joining one of our webinars if you can catch one that we have scheduled pretty regularly. You can check us out at pygmonic.com. Go and sign up. It's a free trial. I'm Kendall Wyatt here at Pygmonic. Good luck studying.